One day, Quacko was thinking. That's right, thinking. What am I going to play? The end of the Age of Chivalry seemed to bring about the Age of Enlightenment, but the interest in the Age of Chivalry seems to have increased in the last 10 years, and to be fair, often it's because of the ideas of sorcery and swords, but in Matt Leacock's game era, we have a game that looks at placement and spaces, buildings, 13 different ones to be exact. So, join us as we unbox and review ERA by Matt Leacock. So, join us as we unbox ERA by Matt Leacock. Well, the first time it's taken me two hands to have to open one of these boxes, but there you go. So, ERA, the box. Um, not great, I mean, just it's, it seems like this kind of country stroll type of thing and this clouds add a dreamlike quality, but bar that it's a bit kind of blah. Uh, on the side you get a bit more substance with a kind of lady looking to the distance longingly. Uh, 10 plus, 1 to 4 players, 50 minutes. Um, this is a dodgy looking guy, looks like a bit of a weirdo. And same again, repeated. Right, so we start with our book loop. Pretty large scale, oh, it does outline what we've got in there, wonderful, okay. And um, yeah, once again, as always, we have characters in the back, some useful stuff as well. Um, right, we've got our hiding boards so we can roll and hide, our punching boards so we can punch things, but obviously, our tools, our dice, which we use to build. And then underneath, we've got our buildings. 13 of them, very nice indeed. Yeah, not bad at all, it looks good, it looks pretty solid. Um, join us as we will give you an honest review of ERA Medieval Age. Hello everyone and welcome to this solo playthrough of ERA. I'm Matt Leacock. Uh, I'm just going to show you one round of solo play. I won't go through and bore you with the whole of it. I'll just show you how it works. Uh, I've set it up so you can see the board here. You start off with obviously your pins in the same place as you start off in a multiplayer game. And you have uh, the fort, three walls, uh, three buildings, a farm. But you have these three scorched uh, areas to start off with. Uh, I've got in front of me the example. That's that's basically what you shield behind to when you do your rolls, that's just because it really outlines very easily what the costs of things are, etc. And I'll be following the rules uh, according to the Solitaire game here. Now, just to note, um, obviously I will be playing against a person called uh, Sir Philip. I get my usual starting dice, which is three yellow, and they come, they basically combine to these, and one grey as well, which is really the fault uh, on Sir Philip. He has two grey and one resource. Uh, the resource cards, of the resource dice, sorry, obviously have wood, stone, buildings, food or stone, food. More useful, of course, then you have the other one, which has wood, build and a rather horrible 
disease slash bad thing to happen to you. The grey obviously has swords. Uh, the bad thing to happen, and, and this is uh, trade, trade, and of course shields. Right. So what we do is uh, just before I start, I'll just quickly go through. Obviously, these are my resources. I use that to purchase buildings within the game, uh, which are all outlined here. Um, if, however, I also roll skulls, they are disasters, which all are outlined here, exactly what those disasters are. And so Philip, obviously, I have to fight with him in the extort part portion, because obviously there's each round, um, and I'll go through each round as we do it. Um, what it suggests is, and I don't do this normally when I play, but here is you have a board next to you and it will have eight rounds because you're trying to score over the eight rounds. Um, I generally don't do that, I just keep it in the mental note or use a notepad because that's what paper was invented for. Um, right, okay, so I'll just begin, I'm just going to roll, and all I'll do is I'll roll, so you can probably see, so I'll roll here. Okay, now as you can see there, I've got uh, some wood, some food, two buildings and three swords. Now I can I can actually stick with that because it's quite good and I will stick with that because I think that's a really good roll. It's actually one of the best first rolls I've ever done. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to move that up so you can just about see it on the edge there. There we go. Um, and then Sir Philip. So basically what happens now is you can roll three times at any of those dice unless you roll the skull of course in which case you have to um, basically uh, put the dice to one side because you have to um, deal with the disaster. Now, um, so Philip, he gets those three and what you do is you roll. Now, he's going to have to fight against me as he's still me and well, it looks like it's going to be a tie um, because we obviously both have three but we'll get to that in just a second. Um, now, what happens is that um, you, what you normally do is you go through each round as, as it were. You would have your roll round and then you'd have your feed round because you've always got to feed your population, which we'll get to in just a second. Um, I keep saying that, but then there are reasons why because I just want to go for the rest. Uh, you then go through your disasters, if there are any, your build, and then your extort. Um, that's how it's played in this as well as you roll your disasters, build, and extort. They're the rounds. Um, so what we do now is we've done our roll. Then we move to the disasters. There are no disasters, so we won't need to deal with those. If you do have to deal with those, usually the disasters are outlined here and depends on how many skulls you get. But if you see here, you've got your disasters as one is uh, basically is to do with brigands. So usually you have to add one to your disaster sheet. Uh, two is disease, which is one of the, the worst ones, especially if you've got close groupings of buildings, unless there's a hospital involved. Three is treachery. Opponent scorch an unwanted area. Four is fire and you lose a building, which can be pretty bad. Five is attack. Opponents lose an unwanted building. And then six is revolt. Lose all trade goods. And that can be a real kick in the teeth. Anyway, I don't have that, so I can move on. Then we move on to our build. Now, basically, so I've got here. Now, what I normally do is I normally turn these into um, our resources. So we've got two build, but I'm going to add my three food, so one, two, three, and I'm going to add my three wood, one, two, three. I don't have any trade, and I don't have any of uh, the stone, and I'll just bring up so you can see that. Now, I have commented, and you'll hear this in the review, that these are slightly illegible, and they are, because in many lights it's very difficult to fully understand what they each are, so I generally um, just you just get the right colours and you should be fine when it comes to this. Right now let's, we should subtract because we've, it says build but we'll just quickly subtract the food because that's the essential one. If for every dice you have, and I have uh, four, you have to lose one food, so one, two, three, four. Right, now I've got two build to use here and I'll just quickly go through what I would probably look at. So building options are put in here, so you've got how much it's going to cost what the building looks like and then what it does uh, effectively at the start I do what most people do I target a farm so one wood so I've got my first building done so I've one wood down there I'm going to grab a farm from the box apologies I've been slightly pedantic as always I do keep my, my uh, <laughs> items well boxed but I've got one here so that's my 
farm, sorry, there, there we go, my farm there. And I'm going to put that right next to my farm. Probably dangerous to do that, but I think it makes sense. Now, I could build a wall, which would be quite useful, because then once you're inside, you get bonus points for that. But I think instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at something else. Um, I could have gone for a long house, but I would, but I don't think I will. Instead, I'm going to go for a lumber mill, because there's three and I've got four, so I should have enough. So I go down to one and a lumber mill, which looks something like that. Put that, and I always, always end up doing this. I put them outside of the town in the vain hope that they won't get destroyed. But they add three each turn, um, and also just to note as well, I've got to add the one food which I haven't done for the building here. Uh, so that's that resolved. Now the next portion of the game is to resolve the extort. Now the extort is. And I'll read this out because it makes more sense to be read. It says, The player of the most swords extorts one resource from the other as usual. Resources lost to Sir Philip are simply removed from your resource track. Choose from the resources shown on Sir Philip's dice when you extort him. If his dice don't show any resources, you don't get any. When Sir Philip takes a resource from you, he prefers trade goods, so he prefers the blue one, the top one here. Um, uh, the, he prefers over stone, wood, and food can't give him a resource or refuse to advance your disaster pick twice. Now, if you notice here, if we look at the, the battle that's gone on, um, he has three swords and I have three swords. That for me is always a tie. So if it's a tie, I say that that's the, there's no extortion happening and we move on. Because in the normal game, and if you just refer to the normal player rules where it says extort here, it, just, it does say quite clearly. Um, Players who roll a number of shields that match or exceed. Uh, this is um, to extort demand one resource of your choice from every other player with fewer swords showing. So basically, what that says to me is, if you have the same, then it's a tie, so you don't have to um, give other resources. So that's it. Uh, right. Okay. So that's that's the first round done. And I'll move this down one. Now at this point, I can. Continue. Now we'll do for one more round just to show you, so you can get you get the full um, feeling of the round. Um, so roll again. Now I do that again. Now, as you can see here, unfortunately I've rolled two disasters. That's not good. Um, but I also have rolled food as well, which I'm going to keep. And I've got one trade good as well, which I'm going to roll again. This is probably easier, I'm all again. And I get three swords, okay, so I'm going to keep those three swords, so that's mine done. Now, we'll just quickly do Sir Philip, just so you can see what Sir Philip gets. Sir Philip gets two swords, and he gets four shields, we'll have to do that in just a second, and three wood. Now, basically, so let's add some ones, so I'll just add these two plus those, there's five food, one, two, three, four, five, okay, three from the lumber mill, one, two, three, uh, two more from the lumber mill, one, two, I can build two as well, but I have got my two uh, skulls, which are my two disasters, and that would be disease, so I lose, and I basically have to add onto my disease tracker, one for every cluster building and as you can see I've got cluster building here and no other cluster building so it's two clustered here and my disease track is this one here this, this brown one here um, I, th I think actually that should have been black but they keep the black peg as a, as a token for non-native first plant and just to show you here this just about can see it's a skull so i shall add two so it's basically one for every building now quickly just to finish the round because i know i'm conscious we've been 10 minutes doing this but um let's just see so we've got two swords uh, and now as you can see compare swords and shields you roll with those on sir philip the diet of the player with the most swords extorts one resource from the other as usual so i'm taking it exactly verbatim from what it says in the book here, and I've just showed you so you can see it. This is extort. It does say quite clearly that they the most swords. My swords now, as you can see, I have three, he has two. So I'm going to take uh, that resource. Now, the thing is that you get to use one resource, so you're only allowed to take one of, and that's 
one wood and one there as well. And then quickly to finish the round off on that is there, I can build something. So look at what I've got here and obviously I've got lots of wood. So I'm probably going to look at getting rid of that wood. Uh, let's see, probably, um, yeah, I'll probably go for another lumber mill because the mills are very useful. So there's three that I'll lose there. One, two, three, and another farm as well. So not letting them burn too much, but I need to make sure that um, my town is fully fed and such and also it's fully stocked with reliable wood source and that is the game um, please watch further for the review I'll discuss the pieces and then I'll discuss the game itself but thank you very much for watching this solo playthrough at the end of last season there was a genuine despair when we saw Matt Leacock's forbidden uh, sky basically prove the adage that sometimes too much of a good thing can be, well, unpleasant. And the fact is that Matt Leacock's era, however, has saved his legacy. This is a far better game than um, uh, Forbidden Sky could ever be. Um, it's a building placement game, it's a resource playing game, it's a game where it's about pushing your luck on the dice roll, but it's also substantive enough that you can play it in the solo mode, which you've seen me play. Um, it's also substantive enough to play it as a group mode. Um, it has the, uh, some of the interesting facets of being able to um, pillage and pilfer from your um, opponents, as well as also being able to um, play with the idea of uh, gaining knowledge and using uh, those sort of culture techniques and, and markers. Um, I like the way it's managed I think it's sophisticated enough that it will give um, sort of the average gamer a lot to draw from a lot to take from it it's a very flexible game as well because it's an enjoyable game and when I say flexible I mean the fact is that you can play it five six seven eight times and have different experiences throughout um, sometimes the game turns against you sometimes it doesn't that's both solo mode and then also in multiplayer mode as well as so probably would be best phrased um, thankfully Matt Leacock has come back and made a great game so I'm I'm just completely pleased with the fact that uh, the man who I think is one of the best game designers in the business um, finally um, hasn't left me in despair but has come back with something that is rich and absorbing and substantive and good enough that it's worth visiting over and over again. So um, yes, go ahead, definitely take this. Well done man, this is Era, um, this is Game Club and I'm Simon, thank you for watching.